All right, in this tutorial, we'll cover dealing with loops uh, and using them to process sets or collections or groups of records. In our previous example, we retrieved a record and sent an email with it, which is great, but not particularly productivity enhancing. It would be much more interesting if the flow could send a whole bunch of emails uh, and, and so that we didn't have to do it because if we if we only had to send one we might just find it just as easy to do it ourselves so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with we create a new flow based on this one so just like we've done in the past let's create a brand new flow using the existing flow it's worth mentioning that uh, reuse of things like these resources can be quite useful so look for an opportunity to start from an existing flow when you're starting uh, when you're starting a new uh, a new project okay working with multiple records and loops okay part of Alex Ed's flow lessons Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is we want to change our retrieval to get not just one record, but more than one record. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the fact that we've got several contacts that are all part of one account, which is a pretty conventional concept in Salesforce. So we've got this account called Boyle Family, and Boyle Family has three different contacts. Uh, and one of them is the Susan Ferris contact that we used. And here are a couple other uh, examples uh, of contacts. And they're all associated with the account. So what I want to do is I want to retrieve all three of these contacts and then send a custom email to each one. So we're going to have to create a different record here. Uh, and let's change the name. Let's receive uh, all contacts for an account. Okay, and we're going to change this to and we're going to change this to account. Okay, and uh, so the conditions that we want to, whoop. Okay, so let's change this. We're going to retrieve multiple contacts for an account. All right, so we're still getting records. We're still getting contact records, so that's that's fine. But we're, we're, we're looking for a different set of conditions now. We are going, we're no longer interested in first name and last name. Uh, we can't actually delete this, but we can change it. So what we care about is this. We care about account ID. So I'm going to hard code this for my demonstration by going to the Boyle family account and I'm going to go right up here to the URL and grab the ID. Now later on we'll see how to make the flow. It's, it's generally a bad idea to use hard coded IDs in flows. It's almost never a good idea. Only lazy product managers who are building demos get away with this for long. So don't do as I'm doing here. Uh, you pretend that you are not seeing me actually look for all contacts where account ID equals this value. Okay, now this time we do expect more than just one record. We get this choice here because sometimes you only want the first record from a set, but in this case we do want all of the records. Uh, and so we're going to need to set temporary, create a temporary storage variable like we did in the previous lesson to store these contacts. Now in flow, sets of records are called collections. So what we need here is a variable, a temporary storage for a collection of records. Uh, and I don't have that in my available resources, so I'm going to have to define it. And we'll select variable and we'll say cur 
contact and we're going to make it a record type and this is contact again now right here notice this checkbox allow multiple values this is this is important i if i don't check this it will create a variable uh, and just essentially store the first one that it comes back uh, and since that's sometimes what you want you get your choice here uh, but uh, i'm going to check this to enable collections and so we're good and now here it is cur contacts and you can see that it's a record collection variable and not just a regular record and like i did before i have to specify uh, the the fields that i want so let me go and grab uh, let's see what do we do we have on call available we have most expert and we're going to want to grab the email address. I think that's actually all we need. Okay, so now we have to figure out how to send an email to every one of those records. And we don't know how many will come through. Could be one, could be 50, because we don't know how many people are in that, in that how many contacts are associated with the account until the flow runs. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop. I'm going to create a loop. And a loop basically uh, creates some flow steps that you will can perform over and over and over again until you have processed all of the records uh, or all of the strings or all of whatever collection you have. So I'm going to go add this loop and I'm going to say loop through contact wherever possible try and pick evocative names that say what's going on you know right now you know exactly what's going on so you might be in a hurry and just want to call it loop but trust me someday you're going to be coming back to this flow and you're going to be happy if it's clear what you're doing so take the time this is your only documentation basically process each contact and generate an email so it asks for the collection so loops loops only are designed to work with one of those sets one of those collection variables so we can pick it right here so far so good uh, we don't really care about direction and the next thing is the loop variable so the way that looping works is every time the loop or the loop cycles it's going to grab one of the entries in the collection one of the records in the collection you need to create a temporary storage variable to hold the current contact each time you go through so since this is a set of contacts a collection of contacts the loop variable has got to be a single contact and the good news is we actually have one from the previous tutorial we have this cur contact which we used to use for doing a record query uh, and now we can just reuse uh, right here and uh, so now uh, I've got my loop in now in order to process this let me select this and hit the delete key okay so let's rearrange this what we're gonna do is we're going to after we retrieve the records we're gonna loop through them and the way that looping works is that you can have you have two arrows coming off of a loop element and one of the arrows is the main loop and then the other arrow is what happens when you're done what happens when you're done looping you got to keep moving most likely so we're going to set this first one to the main loop this is the loop that happens for every item in the collection whether it's 10 or 50 or 100 uh, items in the collection okay so we've got we're going to loop through and for each item we're going to send an email now when well, there's something that I got to do at this point that's super important easy to forget flow should be smarter about doing this automatically but it doesn't so you have to close the loop so I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it forward 
and that's a little confusing. It's actually easier if you uh, have something like, uh, well, let's, let's, for example, it's easier to see if we just kind of, let's add another one of these emails. Oh, you know what? I picked Apex action. I really want a core action. We'll talk more about the difference later on. So I'm just creating a quick one to show you uh, what this looks like. Uh, so what's going on here? Why does this suddenly say fault? Well, there's a couple things that are going on. First thing I'm going to do is delete this line. Delete this line. Every main element, I, I said that that uh, the loop element has these two special connectors. Most elements have a main connection that goes to the next, the next thing, and then they have what's called a fault connector. And the fault connector lets you create a pathway for errors. And we'll, we'll touch on that more uh, later. But for now, if you ac accidentally come across this, don't worry. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It's just giving you a way to handle errors in the future. Um, and uh, so I'm going to close the loop here and now you can see it's a little clearer what's going on. We're looping through and coming back but since we don't actually want to do that uh, we're going to do this and it's a little confusing looking. Uh, so okay so we've got our loop set up we've closed our loop and uh, we're going to I'm going to do a quick save just to catch stuff. Notice how fast uh, flow saves. Uh, it, flow saving was slower in the past and it discouraged frequent saves, but now flow is fast, so save frequently. Okay, so once again, we need to update our email sent to respond to the changes we've made. So if you'll remember what we did here, uh, we set the loop variable to cur contact and you know what we may not actually need to change anything uh, because from our last tutorial this is already pulling cur contact dot email uh, out of uh, the cur contact temporary storage record variable so we're in pretty good shape now let's take a look at our text template if we go over here to our text template in manager you can see that it too is using cur contact. So, so because we reuse this, everything is, doesn't even need to have to be changed. So what I'm going to expect is uh, I'm going to send three three emails. Now, if you remember, two of these don't go to my sit my demo so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just so we can just so we can demonstrate uh, what's going on here I'm going to temporarily change Lauren Boyle and make her email address the same okay so now we're basically if this runs properly we expect two emails to show up in my test inbox. So let's run it. Okay, let's go over and take a look at the inbox. And here we see that sure enough, we have two emails showed up and you can see that they're not the same. You know what I what I didn't do, what I could have taken the time to do, is take the first name and the last name and put it in the email. And that would make it a lot clearer. It would say, like, Dear Susan Ferris. And then this one would say, Dear Lauren Boyle. But in the interest of brevity, we're going to leave that as an exercise for the observer. And you can see uh, that this was successful. So we now have shown how we can take multiple records and process them. Here are some additional resources where you can learn a lot about Flow, the other tutorials, some of our official data, and the link to the unofficial Flow community site.